the first assassin of the Alliance, Yu Jiang, who was pursued by his arch-rivals, inexplicably traveled back to the 1970s after hiding in a cave. In an ordinary era, he became an ordinary rural girl. I was thinking of staying away from fighting and killing, just to retire in this world. Unexpectedly, my arch-nemesis also came through. Is it true that our mortal enemies and I traveled together until the 1970s and committed to each other? Yu Jiang. Thank you for inviting me, there's no need to Yu Jiang had originally planned to live a life of idleness in this era, but unexpectedly, his parents, brother, and the people around him were getting worse and worse. How annoying. Do you want a roll? Let's roll up together. Chapter 1. Accidental Crossing. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Interstellar 3032, The Worm Galaxy. Yu Jiang is living in the dense forest of the Zerg tribe, shuttling rapidly while avoiding the occasional outbursts of primitive savage insects. Thinking of her as the top assassin in the Grand Alliance, a high dot level superpower differentiated by SSS, she is now being chased like a lost dog. After Yu Jiang whipped away a three-dot-meter-dot-long six-legged beetle, she finally decided to stop and fight the man who was chasing her to the end. After a few breaths, Lu Beiyuan, who was firmly biting the trail of Yu River, stopped across from him. The two looked at each other across the riverbank. Under the mask, Yu Jiang knew what a stunning face that person had. That's the face that dominates various lists of people who want to get married and sleep all year round. The mask cover, although only those deep and pitch black eyes can be seen, the aura around the body cannot be stopped. Yes, that face, which is a treasure for the entire interstellar space, Yu Jiang had already gained extremely strong immunity in hundreds of fights with Lu Beiyuan. Just occasionally being attracted by the incomprehensible expression in those eyes. Just as now, Yu Jiang was defeated by the scorching gaze on the other side. There was a hopeful feeling in those eyes that was determined to succeed. Yu Jiang felt a bit heartbreaking and seemed to take out a nutrient from his wristband without any concern, then looked up and drank it all in one gulp. I said, General, on the road, you have been chasing me for three days and three nights without rest. What's wrong? Your federal government is only one less achievement than me. Lu Beiyuan didn't take any action, but he said as if explaining, Yu Jiang, the number one assassin in the alliance. There have been thousands or even hundreds of federal officials who have died in your hands over the years. The federal government issued a special order to pursue you five years ago. As a federal soldier, killing you is my responsibility. Indeed, over the years, Yu Jiang has been a notorious presence in the entire federation, and the Federation doll's childhood dream was to eliminate the Zerg and kill Yu Jiang. Unfortunately, Yu Jiang has exceptional military prowess and excellent concealment. In recent years, only Lu Beiyuan, who is also an SSS-level superpower, can catch up with her and cannot shake her off. This time, Yu Jiang was discovered by Lu Beiyuan at the top auction house and chased all the way from the Federal Galaxy to the Barbarian Worm Galaxy. Yu Jiang held the other end of the red whip in her hand and looked at the strong and upright figure across from her. Although she couldn't bear to part with the beautiful face under the mask, she still secretly harbored a murderous heart in her heart. I'm afraid it won't be easy to escape this time. It depends on whether he caught her first or she killed him first. The battle was about to break out, and the remnants of the red whip and the blade were constantly tearing and tugging at the air but no one was able to gain the upper hand. At the moment of anxiety, a six-legged beetle with huge wings rushed out of the nearby bushes and charged straight towards the Yu River. Yu Jiang was focused on dealing with the blade that Lu Beiyuan was chopping towards him, but he didn't notice the sudden emergence of the beetle for a moment. Fortunately, Yu Jiang has the super-perception ability brought by his abilities and years of combat experience. In the moment he was knocked open, the aircraft and thrusters at his waist opened together, and Yu Jiang flew out into the distance while spitting out a mouthful of blood. Lu Beiyuan seemed to have no idea that there would be a third party causing trouble in this battlefield that belonged to two people. He was stunned for a second, 
then quickly opened his aircraft and chased towards Yu Jiang. At the same time, a blade of light flashed behind him, and the head of the six-legged beetle rolled to the ground. On the other side, Yu Jiang stumbled into a cave. God knows how embarrassed I have been being chased by the bandit Lu Beiyuan these past few days, and my equipment on my body is unbearable and has been damaged. Now even the aircraft was damaged in the collision just now, so that Yu Jiang can only hide in a nearby cave, hoping not to be discovered by the road dog thieves. At this moment, a strange totem in the cave caught the attention of Yu Jiang. Yu Jiang may not care if it is just an ordinary totem, but this totem is exactly the same as the birthmark on her waist. What exactly is this? Before Yu Jiang could think much, a faint sound of footsteps could already be heard from the entrance of the cave. Yu Jiang leaned against the stone wall, took out his whip, and planned to have a final duel with Lu Beiyuan. But she only saw the suddenly widened pupils of Lu Beiyuan under the mask, and then felt a strong suction behind her. When she couldn't react, she was sucked into a chaos. Finally, Yu Jiang seemed to hear Lu Beiyuan calling her name, and the urgency in that voice was something she had never heard before. Lu Beiyuan Yu Jiang didn't know how long he had been unconscious, but he felt the sunlight in front of him too dazzling. Are you in the Zerg forest or were you caught in the Federation's lair? People around her seemed to notice that she was about to wake up and quickly approached, shouting her name. Jiang Jiang. Jiang Jiang, wake up quickly. Jiang Jiang. Is this calling her? Who would call her that? It's not surprising that Yu Jiang finds it strange. During her more than ten years of being trained as a tool in a training camp, her six years as a killer, and even her entire twenty-year life, no one has ever called her Jiang Jiang. The most common titles she heard were Number 67 and the female demon head Yu Jiang. Number 67 is the number that Yu Jiang initially received when she entered the training camp, and it is also the number that runs through her entire life. But now, what is the situation? Yu Jiang opened his eyes and saw a refined middle-aged man and a wealthy middle-aged woman. Although their faces had left traces in time, what surprised Yu Jiang was that it was her first time seeing those two faces, but why did she feel a sense of familiarity? The two of them were anxiously looking at her, their eyes full of surprise but unable to conceal their fatigue. Especially the middle-aged woman, with slightly swollen eyes, it is not difficult to see that she has just cried. Yu Zhang's eyes quickly swept over the two of them. The clothes looked rustic, but they were washed very clean. The feeling of poverty and the surrounding environment were natural, but the elegance revealed by these two people was out of place with the environment. The woman saw the child wake up for a long time without speaking, so she only looked at them and felt anxious. She hugged the girl and sobbed. My daughter, what's wrong with you? Don't scare mom. Yu Jiang only felt a warmth in front of him. But, what mother? When did she have a mother? The professional ethics of the assassin tell Yu Jiang that all unknown environments are not suitable for reckless actions. So Yu Jiang's dementia appeared in his father's eyes. He only felt that his daughter had just woken up and had not recovered, after all, her daughter had hit her head in the water this time, and the doctor said there may be sequelae. So Father Yu comforted his wife while attempting to pull his daughter out of her arms. When Yu Jiang, with messy hair and gauze wrapped around her head, lay back in the hospital bed, she had already sorted out some details from the person who claimed to be her father just now. Now Yu Jiang was found unconscious by the riverbank yesterday, and when she was discovered, her head was still bleeding. It should have been hit by a stone by the riverbank. So the person who discovered her took her to the village clinic and notified her parents. Later, she was transferred to the hospital in the county, which is where she is now. And the two people in front of him are Yu Zhang's parents. And she became Yu Zhang. Chapter 2 1970s, you are listening at Novel Full Audio. The door was opened with a loud bang, and amidst a series of slightly messy footsteps, a man in military uniform squeezed into the ward before the doctor. 
The intimidating appearance only makes people feel that this is not a soldier, but a rough kid on the street. Sister, are you okay? Why did you just bump your head? I scared my brother to death. Yu Jiang looked at the anxious man, although he immediately understood his identity. But is she ignorant? Are brothers such silly creatures? Looking at his younger sister staring at him without blinking, Yu Hongqing was startled. Isn't that right? He hasn't been home for just half a year, and his sister doesn't know him anymore. Or, did you fall into a stupidity? Yu Hongqing pulled the doctor behind him and said, Doctor, come and see if my sister has fallen into a stupidity. Upon receiving the gaze of his old father, the swordsman, beside him, Yu Hongqing quickly changed his mind and said, My sister fell. How did she do? The doctor used his good professional ethics to try his best to stop the impulse to cross this person out, but of course, he also couldn't rule out the concern about Yu Hongqing wearing military uniforms. Quickly walked over to Yu Jiang's side, conducting routine examinations while inquiring about him. Yu Jiang, right. Do you have any discomfort, headaches, or other feelings? Yu Jiang has already figured out a solution. Since she has become this Yu Jiang, the first thing to do is to play Yu Jiang well and not let anyone notice any abnormalities. She just doesn't have any memories of Yu Jiang. Fortunately, Yu Jiang bumped her head, so it's not an exaggeration for her to pretend to have amnesia, I feel a bit dizzy and don't remember many things from before. The hearts of the Yu couple, whose daughter had woken up to breathe a sigh of relief, rose to their throats. The second brother next to him first asked, Sister. What do you mean, you fell and forgot about your brother and me? Yu Jiang rolled his eyes in his heart, but replied calmly, I know you are my brother. Do you remember when you were two years old when I fed you charcoal from the firewood pile? Before Yu Jiang could react, Yu's father threw a chestnut on his own son's head and said, You're okay to say, feed your sister ashes. If I didn't kill your child, it's your good luck. Besides, your sister was only two years old at the time, remember what? Yu Hongqing hugged his head and rushed aside, feeling aggrieved and afraid to speak. Yu Jiang. Does this family get along this way? The doctor asked Yu Jiang a few more questions, and apart from his own name, Yu Jiang couldn't remember clearly. After all, she is now a pitiful amnesiac who has hit her head, and it's not surprising that she can't remember the past. There is currently no technology like taking a brain CT scan, and the doctor also believes that amnesia is caused by hitting the head. He comforts the parents of the Yu family not to force memory recovery in this situation, but to take good care of it at home and maybe one day they can recover their memory. What he didn't say is that it's possible that he won't be able to recover for a lifetime. Yu's father and mother are not illiterate farmers, they have also attended university. Although I haven't studied medicine, I have heard of amnesia to some extent. My precious daughter has suffered such a serious injury, so if I can't remember, I must go back and take good care of her. Everyone seemed to calmly accept the reality of Yu Zhang's amnesia and tell her about her and her family. Yu Zhang also took the opportunity to quickly absorb information from this world. Yu Zhang speculated that it was the totem that led her to this world. Coincidentally, Yu Jiang from this world collided with her head, lost too much blood, and died. Her soul entered Yu Jiang's body, and she became Yu Jiang. And this Yu Jiang river is not only the same as her, but also the totem that led her to cross. The world in which the original owner lived was ancient earth, China in 1973. Although there are few wars in this era, China still lacks food and clothing. Yu Jiang, who wanders back and forth between life and death, takes his life to complete tasks but never lacks food and clothing a little sympathetic to what's going on with my current self. But when Yu Jiang first tasted ancient earth cuisine, she instantly felt that her interstellar life was no longer fragrant. With hot and fragrant food, who would still like nutritional supplements? Although she can control plant growth, she can also produce food without mutations. But she is a disabled party, even if she collects thousands or even hundreds of ancient cooking books, she still cannot make food that can be swallowed. 
Moreover, many foods in the interstellar era have become extinct, and even if she possesses botanical powers, she cannot transform those extinct plants out of thin air. In short, for Yu Jiang, she is neither a clever woman nor has much rice to cook for her. Returning to the present, Yu Jiang has gained some preliminary understanding of this era. Firstly, this is an era that generally tends towards peace. Although there are constant minor conflicts and countless soldiers defending this country with their blood, it is already safe enough for ordinary people. Secondly, this is an era of glorious labor, where everyone in the village, except for children and elderly people who cannot move, needs to go to the fields to work and produce food. They not only often cannot eat enough, but also have to work hungry. After the intuitive perception of this era just now, Yu Jiang once again has a perception of the backwardness of this world. But Yu Jiang doesn't want to change the world. She is a selfish person who is not great enough to change the times on her own. What made Yu Jiang grateful was that their family did not belong to the type of family that could not eat enough. Yu's father is the captain of the village, and there is no shortage of money or a job for her at home. Therefore, she used to study in high school in the county and only went to the fields to help on weekends or during busy farming periods. Now that she has graduated from high school and is hospitalized due to injuries, her parents and father, Yu, do not allow them to do anything else and plan to go home to take good care of Yu Jiang. There is no need to think about working underground. Father and mother of Yu will not agree, although Yu Jiang did not hesitate. During these few days of hospitalization, Yu Jiang gradually adapted to the life of the 1970s. There is no war, no never ending assassinations and escapes, one can daydream in bed for a whole day, or sleep under a hood for an afternoon. Although there is no advanced technology, convenient tools, or various recreational activities in interstellar society, it is necessary to always speak of the glory of labor and be careful not to be found wrong. But for the cautious assassin of interstellar space, this is not a problem. She has already enjoyed the life here at an extremely fast pace, after all, this stability alone is what Yu Jiang dreams of. Besides, Yu Jiang also received a surprise. After Yu Jiang woke up at noon that day, the ward was empty. Yu Jiang instinctively swiped his wrist out of thin air, wanting to check the time. The virtual screen suddenly appeared in the ward. As time ticked by, Yu Jiang lost his last trace of drowsiness and stared at the screen in front of him for a long time, unable to regain his senses. Double dotted on the wrist, the wristband will automatically release in visible mode. A small silver bracelet full of technology appeared on Yu Jiang's wrist. Surprisingly, her bracelet was also worn together. Chapter 3 Bracelets. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Yu Jiang looked at the wristband that suddenly appeared on his wrist, the electronic screen flashing with light, and the ticking sound of the virtual clock. All of this is out of place with this ward. Fortunately, there is only Yu Jiang in the ward now, and no one has noticed the appearance of the bracelet. Yu Jiang couldn't help but hide his face, unsure for a moment whether to cry or laugh. She inexplicably entered such a new era, where although there was no war, she also gained the family affection she had always hoped for. But after all, she is not the original owner, and these days she has also been unable to settle down. At this moment, her bracelet suddenly appeared, bringing her past to her current self. Can I really leave the past and start over again after a while, Yu Jiang calmed down and began to check his wristband. The wristband is hailed as one of the greatest inventions of the interstellar era, possessing extremely powerful functions. The most basic function is storage. The bracelet space is an independent space outside the world, and only the bracelet owner can open it, which is extremely safe. When in use, it's not about searching for items one by one in the warehouse, but rather when the items are stored, the bracelet system will automatically classify and store them, and then the item will appear in the bracelet's directory, making it convenient for the owner to check the warehouse items at any time. Picking up items is also very simple, just manually click on the directory. But Yu Jiang made modifications to his bracelet, and with just a slight control of his mind, 
he could retrieve the item. After all, Yu Zhang's identity determines that she will face battles at any time. If one day when she clicks on the bracelet and is ambushed and killed, who will she cry to? In addition, Yu Jiang also opened up a laboratory space for his own bracelet. The difference between this space and the warehouse is that the entire space can be moved out at any time, making it convenient for various experiments such as Yu Jiang weapon modification. The social entertainment section in the bracelet has disappeared completely, leaving only a bare communication panel. What else is communication useful for? I cannot open contact with people in the interstellar space myself. So, is this a deletion or omission? The functionality of the bracelet is minimal, and Yu Jiang doesn't feel it's a pity, after all, his own space is still the best. Is it possible that the communication function may not have some shortcomings, and is there still a second wristband in this world? Thinking too much is useless, Yu Jiang skillfully controls the bracelet. First, open your own warehouse page, where the list of items stored in the interstellar era is neatly arranged. Yu Jiang tried to use his mind to take a dagger out of the warehouse. With a flash of white light, the dagger appeared in Yu Jiang's hand. The warehouse can still be used, Yu Jiang couldn't help but be delighted. Otherwise, anyone guarding a pile of treasures can only watch, and that feeling is so unbearable. Just a slight attempt, Yu Jiang put the dagger back into the warehouse. After all, there are people coming and going in the ward, as well as her father and mother who constantly take care of her. Suddenly, a dagger popped out, fearing that others wouldn't suspect it. After confirming that the warehouse could be used normally, Yu Jiang began to appreciate the mountains and rivers he had built. Among them, some of the advanced weapons of the interstellar era with considerable scale were purchased directly, but more were tailor-made by Yu Jiang for himself. In addition, there are high-tech materials that can't be seen all at once, as well as rare treasures, books, and so on that Yu Jiang searched throughout the interstellar space. Among them, it is worth mentioning the ancient recipes and books that Yu Jiang loves and hates, which occupy a large part of the books. Flipping through the warehouse roster, Yu Jiang was not too pleased. After a few days of understanding the world, she realized very clearly that the vast majority of things here cannot be revealed to others. Technology is not at the same level, and the emergence of these things in this era will inevitably disrupt the balance of this era, which is absolutely unacceptable for Yu Jiang, who has finally achieved a peaceful life. In the following days, Yu Jiang took advantage of his brief solitude and carefully rechecked the bracelet. This examination really caught her off guard. Yu Jiang looked at the machine pulled out from the corner of the warehouse and was certain that there was nothing so ugly in her collection. Looking at the item information and usage instructions on the screen, Yu Jiang only felt that he was firmly controlled by someone. The joy of the return of the bracelet disappeared, leaving only fear of the unknown and a filled sense of vigilance. Because this is a machine that trades with the interstellar world, it can exchange interstellar items with crops that are common here but have already become extinct in the interstellar era. It's not just crops, there are a wide variety of trading options available. Of course, the things that can be exchanged also have varying values. If it were an ordinary person, they might start a life of self-transformation. But how sensitive was Yu Jiang's vigilance? She was already thinking about why she had crossed over. What kind of person can do for their own journey? Who are they behind the scenes and what is their purpose? Even the totem on the stone wall may not be a coincidence, otherwise how to explain this sudden appearance in her warehouse, as if it were a machine tailored for her. But what Yu Jiang can be certain of is that apart from this strange machine, the bracelet and anything inside it cannot be connected to the interstellar space. And as early as the first day he arrived in this world, Yu Jiang had already explored the world with his weak body. Although she didn't know if there were any interstellar beings in this world, what she could confirm was that she was the only one with this interstellar superpower. This is a natural ability that can be possessed by people with abilities above level S, perception. That is to perceive whether there are other supernatural beings around. This ability can perceive abilities that are lower in level than Yu Jiang's abilities. 
As for those like her, Yu Jiang never thought about it. After all, SSS level abilities are not big cabbage, and there are only her and Lu Beiyuan in the entire interstellar space. It's just that machine. Yu Jiang doesn't plan to use it, so it's better to add restrictions and keep it safe. Half a month has passed in the blink of an eye. Yu Jiang has finally been discharged from the hospital and will return to his future life in Fengha village. Chapter 4 Going Home You are listening at NovelFull.audio On the day of discharge, Father Yu specially rushed the village's ox cart to pick up Yu Jiang. Although they have a bicycle at home, it only has a bare seat, so there is no stable ox cart. As for Yu Jiang and his brother Yu Hongcheng, they had already returned to the army a week ago. After all, his vacation had run out. Even if this guy couldn't bear to part with his sister anymore, he had to say goodbye with tears after stuffing Ten Yuan into her. Yu's mother looked at her daughter's undisguised disdain towards her brother, and although she didn't notice either, she still pulled her son away, which can be considered as saving a trace of her brother's face for Yu Hongcheng in front of Yu Jiang. After returning, he explained to Yu Jiang that Yu Hongcheng was not usually considered a lively person to the outside world, and was more serious and meticulous in his work. That second year appearance is only limited to one's own home. Then he also reminded Yu Jiang not to reveal her brother's true identity, after all, if outsiders found out about her son, it might be even harder to get married. No, there's no girl to marry. Yu Zhang's family is located in a village in X province in southern China. The village is not close to the county, and it takes two hours to walk and one hour to ride a cart. When Yu Jiang was about to fall asleep from shaking for the third time, he heard a voice next to him. A village aunt is greeting Yu's mother and asking about Yu Zhang's affairs. After all, this incident was quite big at the beginning. It is said that someone saw the blood flowing out of the girl's forehead, and when she was carried to the village clinic, she was almost out of breath. This person has been staying in the hospital for half a month, and the captain runs to the hospital every day. I heard he also lost his memory. Yu Jiang listened expressionlessly to the villagers chatting about his gossip. It's not that the villagers intentionally asked her to hear it, it's just that the five senses of the supernatural beings have been developed to the extreme, and those words they think are very quiet can be easily heard by Yu Jiang. But as a result, Yu Jiang heard a lot of useful news, such as the fact that the original owner's death may not have been an accident. Although Yu Jiang had the intention to find the culprit for the original owner, she was not in a hurry and had to familiarize herself with the environment first. The brick and tile house in front is our home now. The voice of Yu's mother beside her pulled back Jiang Yu Jiang's thinking. Yu Jiang looked towards the direction pointed by his mother, but there was a small courtyard standing there, which was completely different from the old houses he saw on his way back. Although these houses are not considered good in Yu Jiang's eyes. But Yu Jiang still responded to Yu's mother with a nod. She is not a talkative person, but rather a person who can use her hands and never force her. During the half month since Yu Jiang was hospitalized, she has been talking to people all the time. If it were in the past, she would have almost finished speaking for a year. The ox cart gradually approached the door. Yu Jiang saw two elderly people hurriedly walking out. A woman in her sixties was wearing an apron and, due to her urgency, was still holding a spatula in her hand. The old man next to him also looked like he was in his sixties. He didn't hold anything in his hands, but his body was covered in dust and covered in sawdust. Both of them looked at their granddaughter on the cart with a happy expression on their faces. Feeling her daughter's nervousness, Yu's mother gently patted the back of Yu Zhang's hand as a sign of comfort. As soon as the car stopped, Father Yu quickly jumped out of the car and kindly helped his wife and daughter down. Yu's mother took her daughter's hand and led her to the two elderly people, introducing her to them, Jiang Jiang, these are grandparents. Both elderly people know about their granddaughter's amnesia, and today they were reminded by their son not to scare her daughter. So everyone restrained themselves from going forward and inspecting their granddaughter inside and outside. 
Grandma Yu pushed aside her husband and daughter dot in dot law and walked over to take Yu Zhang's hand, saying, Nan Nan, I am Grandma. Does Grandma's little girl still feel uncomfortable? Does her head still hurt? Faced with this sudden enthusiasm, Yu Jiang didn't know how to respond. Or rather, she has been very constrained by such thoughtfulness these past few days. Finally, Yu Jiang could only dryly answer, It's okay. Yu's mother once again helped her daughter out of trouble. Mom, the doctors have said that the girl is fine. Just go home and rest for a while. Let's not stand at the door. We haven't eaten yet. Take me to see what delicious food you have made. The relationship between Mother Yu and Grandma Yu is already good. Grandma Yu is not someone who treats her daughter in dot law harshly, let alone this daughter in dot law who not only respects her and is easy to get along with, but also a college student. When my daughter in dot law was able to leave the iron rice bowl in the city and return to the countryside with her son, she couldn't make a single mistake about this daughter in dot law. In recent years, my daughter in dot law has given birth to a son and a daughter for our family, and the children are in high spirits. The family is also well organized. Even the first thing that comes to mind is the old couple. Although his in-laws withdrew from Xiangjiang, it did not have any impact on his son's work. Who wouldn't envy a daughter dot in dot law like this from all over the place? Grandma Yu also reacted to her mother's words and said, Yes, let's eat first, let's finish our meal. So Grandma Yu held her daughter dot in dot law in one hand and her granddaughter in the other, without even looking at the two big men next to her, and the three of them walked home. Father Yu and Grandpa Yu, who were abandoned by their daughter dot in dot law, looked at each other and said, Dad, why don't you also lead me in? Grandpa Yu looked at his troubled son in his forties and gave him a flying leg. Roll on, don't make me sick. Captain Yu glanced at the three women who were about to enter the house and worked tirelessly to remove their luggage from the cart. Grandpa Yu watched his son go out and knew that finding his wife in the kitchen would not bring him any benefits, so he went to the backyard to continue his carpentry work. Yu's mother did not directly take Yu Jiang to the room, but first walked around the house. Along the way, I talked to Yu Jiang about the structure of my home. Here is Yu Jiang's room, there is her brother's room, her room with Yu's father, and Yu's grandfather and grandmother's room on the other side. The kitchen and bathhouse also pointed to Yu Jiang one by one. Finally, Yu Jiang saw the room of his era. It has to be said that the Yu family is really kind to Yu Jiang, their daughter. The seats and benches are carefully taken care of, and there is a newly bounced cotton quilt on the bed. There are also several long braggy dresses in the wardrobe. You should know that in this era, all the girls who could wear the blodge long dress were favored in the city. Just by looking at the things in the room, it can be seen that the original owner had a very good living condition at home, so the death of the original owner should have nothing to do with the people at home. So who exactly is it? Yu Jiang flipped through the books on the desk, which were high school textbooks. Not bad, these books can help him understand the current level of world development. In no time, Grandma Yu's meal was also ready. She shouted loudly towards the backyard, Old man, it's time to eat. Go wash it up quickly, and then bring the vegetables. Grandpa Yu heard that he put down the tools in his hand, cleaned them up briefly, and then went to the kitchen. It seemed that there was nothing wrong with the big man going to the kitchen to help. Of course, this is also how the Yu family believes that the other men in the village are waiting for their daughter dot in dot law to bring the food to the table. Father Yu walked in and saw his mother and daughter dot in dot law busy in the kitchen. He also took the chicken soup from his daughter dot in dot law's hand and took it out. At the dinner table, Yu Jiang worked hard to adapt to his family's thoughtfulness while trying to respond as much as possible. He also had to listen to his grandmother and eat well. Is this the burden of happiness? Chapter 5 Yu Lauda's Wife Causes Troubles You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Before finishing the meal, I heard the sound of the frame smashing against the door outside. Yu Jiang calmly changed his grip on the chopsticks, 
as if he could throw them as a dagger at any time. Is it some enemy who came knocking? Yu Jiang gave his mother a questioning look. It's your aunt, Yu's mother said with a hint of annoyance auntie. That shouldn't be seeking revenge. But the expression on Yu's mother's face was very disgusted, even her grandparents showed some impatience not. Right but as a rural woman, there shouldn't be much danger, and her own grandmother should be able to solve it. Yu Jiang thought this way and made a gesture, holding chopsticks and picking up a piece of pork belly and putting it into his mouth. She is truly her grandmother, willing to put on oil, delicious. Yu's mother went to open the door at the entrance, and a slightly plump woman wearing coarse cloth rushed in towards the dining hall. The woman shouted to Grandma Yu with great enthusiasm, Mom! Mom! Bring me a piece of white flour cake quickly. I've been exhausted all the way. It seems that she had already known her character, and apart from Yu Jiang, no one took her words to heart, with a calm expression on their face. Father Yu also put a piece of fish into his slightly surprised daughter's bowl. The woman rushed in and saw a table of good dishes and meat in Yu Jiang's bowl. Ignoring the occasion, he started crying and howling, Oh my goodness! My parents-in-law are too biased. My uncle's family can have a lot of meat and fish every day, while our eldest family can only eat bran and vegetables every day. That's your eldest son, eldest grandson. You can just watch them do nothing better than my uncle's family. Yu's mother, who walked in, already had anger in her eyes, leaving only good upbringing to advise her not to rush forward and take action. The woman continued to howl as if she couldn't feel her surroundings, without any restraint. This time, she set her sights on Yu Jiang. My baby doesn't have any meat to eat. You loser girl, you have the face to sit here. If you ask me, your son might die outside someday. Everything in this family will belong to my son from now on. You should bring this to my son now. The Yu family couldn't bear it anymore, and Yu's mother directly slapped the woman with two big ear scrapes. The woman was about to fight back when she saw Grandpa Yu, who was silent on the side, with a gloomy expression on his face and slamming his chopsticks heavily on the table. The woman suddenly stopped speaking, afraid to move or scream. Her father dot in dot law has seen blood on the battlefield before, so she dare not be tough. Yu Jiang also stepped forward to separate Yu's mother from the woman, seemingly preventing them from fighting again, but upon closer inspection, he protected Yu's mother in the position of a protector. Yu's mother felt a rush of emotion as she watched her daughter's movements. Yu Jiang didn't take any action, just spoke slowly and calmly, as if the woman across from him was some kind of aunt. What is this, auntie? You just said your husband and son can't eat, why can't they eat? Isn't it useless for you to be a wife or a mother? Who gave you the courage to come to my house and make trouble now that you're useless yourself? Do you think that if you make a scene, your husband and son will have something to eat? Don't go back with a swollen face and limp legs. Your husband and son have no one to take care of them. If they are punished again to sweep the pigsty or something, it will be your fault Yu Zhang's PUA caught the woman off guard. Is it really because she's useless that her husband and son can't eat meat all at once? The woman felt a bit guilty, but she still pretended to be straightforward and retorted, You dare not hit me. You should. If you hit me, I will go to the county police station and see if your father can still be the captain. The more a woman speaks, the more she feels justified. She was slapped twice by her second wife just now. She doesn't believe that the police don't care. If you hit me, you'll have to pay for it. Pay me 100 yuan, otherwise I'll report to the police. Yu Jiang sneered, 100 yuan, you deserve it too. Isn't it necessary to report to the police? You go report it. Is it the heavier charge of slapping you or the heavier charge of cursing frontline soldiers? If the public security knows that you were beaten because of cursing frontline soldiers, they might even applaud and cheer, that's right. We also need to report to the public security, arrest people like you, lock them up for ten days and a half months, and see if you dare to speak recklessly. Yu's mother also helped on the side. 
Grandma Yu has an ugly face, she never likes this daughter. In. Lol. If it weren't for this woman's design of hugging her son in front of the whole village and then threatening suicide, how could she let such a woman enter the door? Now everyone in Mr. Yu is jumping around all day. The eldest son can't lift it clearly and can't stand up. The eldest daughter dot in dot law doesn't work, has nothing to do, and knows to take advantage of small things all day. She is still a man who values sons over daughters. The two daughters in the family were wasted shamelessly, while the son didn't do anything. At the age of 25, he was still waiting at home for his mother to bring food to his mouth. Fortunately, when they were planning to sell their granddaughter for a dowry, the old man promptly discovered and stopped them. Although my granddaughter has also married, the man was chosen by the old man, who is honest and has a strong mother at home. In recent years, my eldest daughter dot in dot law has not been able to get any good from their family. For today's situation, Grandma Yu naturally wouldn't let her second daughter dot in dot law and granddaughter run ahead. It is more righteous to teach your daughter dot in dot law a lesson when you are your own mother dot in dot law. Boss, if you're here to cause trouble today, get out of here. Otherwise, I won't stop Xiao Yu, Mother Yu, and Nan Nan from taking you to the police. Yu Lauda's wife finally realized she was afraid and scanned every member of the Yu family with a look of grievance. All right, don't pretend to be pitiful to me. Who doesn't know your character yet? If you have something to say, just go back to your own house for me. Grandma Yu looked at her staring at her little son with such eyes, as if she had eaten a fly. How dare she still think of her little son? How could the boss be blind and take a liking to such a thing? Mr. Yu's daughter dot in dot law thought about the purpose of her visit today and stopped being a demon, looking at Mr. Yu with a pleasing expression on her face. Uncle, sister dot in dot law has nothing else to do today. Even your nephew Bauer is 25 years old this year. Everyone in the village has children at this age, and your nephew hasn't even married a daughter dot in dot law. Isn't this for marrying a wife? He doesn't like the rural girl in our village either so he wants to help him find a relaxed job in the city first. With a job, it's easy to find a wife. Isn't that enough to find a city wife? We need to find a beautiful girl whose parents are both employees. I told Bao that beautiful girls are all cheap things that seduce men, but he didn't listen and insisted. Is there nothing I can do? What's important about appearance? The most important thing is being able to give birth to a son for our Lao Yu family, hey hey hey, what kind of eyes do you have? Why do you look down on my bower? My bower is a precious treasure in the family. If you ask me, she is more than enough to match that girl from Beijing. I have lowered my expectations. Mr. Yu's daughter dot in dot law spoke with a proud expression, as if all the girls had to stick it on his son. Just you bower. How much does he weigh? Who in the village doesn't know? Has he not found a family willing to marry the girl to his family since he is not 25 years old? A girl from a good family who is willing to associate with him. Only Mr. Yu's family treats him as a treasure. Not to mention those families who value their daughters slightly, even those who sell their daughters for dowry are unwilling. Mr. Yu's daughter dot in dot law said that her son is at the top of the line. Whoever marries their daughter will suffer a loss for their family, so they will not give a penny of dowry. They also need the bride to marry a dowry of 200 yuan. Now it's even more outrageous, even thinking about asking Father Yu to find a job for her son and finding a city girl. Yu's mother felt speechless for a moment, and according to Yu's wife's request. It was better to dream more realistically. Grandpa Yu listened to these absurd and incoherent words, and felt a surge of blood and energy all over his body, accompanied by a severe cough. Father Yu beside him quickly helped his own father and gave him a pat on the back. When Grandpa Yu recovered a little, he shouted at his eldest daughter dot in dot law, get out of here, I came here to dream. You weigh a few pounds and a few tails. Don't come back to me again, otherwise I'll hit you every time I see you. The daughter dot in dot law of Mr. Yu didn't dare to stay long when she saw the old man getting angry. 
she quickly ran out and kicked the door as if venting her anger when she ran to the door. Due to exerting too much force, Mr. Yu's daughter dot in dot law was unable to stop for a moment, and this kick directly led her to fall to the ground. Mr. Yu's wife felt ashamed and quickly got up to curse and ran away. Chapter 6 Pharmaceuticals for Grandpa Yu You are listening at NovelFull.audio At this moment, no one in the Yu family noticed her, and everyone gathered together to care about Grandpa Yu's health. Yu Jiang took the initiative to help Grandpa Yu into the house to rest, but the fingertips on Grandpa Yu's hand quietly felt his pulse. Yes, although Yu Jiang is an interstellar, he is proficient in the techniques of traditional Chinese medicine. This is still the skill she learned in the training camp back then. At that time, there was an old man in the training camp who was good at studying various gu and poison. Because he valued Yu Jiang's excellent plant system ability, he asked her to be his assistant. This old man is not a good person. He not only disregarded Yu Zhang's physical burden and urged her to take various medicines, but also used her to test the medicine. During her years as an assistant in Yu Jiang, she has tried no less than a hundred types of poisons, but it seems that her body is really different from ordinary people. She has become the only person by the old man's side who has survived. This kind of life lasted for six years, and finally the old man died, allowing Yu Jiang to be liberated. As for the old man's death, of course, it was written by Yu Jiang. The old man never restricted Yu Jiang from reading his books in order to better promote the growth of plants. It was through these books that Yu Jiang learned his skills in medicine and drug production. Later, the old man died on an ordinary night. The Alliance has suspected Yu Jiang, but they have never been able to find evidence, and at that time, Yu Jiang was still of great use to the Alliance, so the death of all the old men is also unresolved. Later, Yu Jiang met countless people she could save, including those from the Alliance and the Federation, but she never took action. There was also an exception, although it was not for the purpose of saving people, it was just a mistake for Yang to save a man's life. As for who that person was and what he looked like, Yu Jiang had long forgotten. But now Yu Jiang has resumed using medical techniques. In just a few breaths, Yu Jiang made a rough assessment of Grandpa Yu's illness. Grandpa, did you suffer a heart injury while fighting when you were young? Grandpa you didn't think anything was wrong. Hey, why are you so interested in these things today? Didn't you all try to escape when I told your siblings before? Yu Jiang didn't know how to explain for a moment, but learned from the spoiled appearance of the little girl in the ward before and spoke in an extremely inexperienced tone, Grandpa, aren't I interested now? Grandpa Yu, who has experienced all the storms and waves on the battlefield, you damn girl, talk to me well. Yu Jiang regretted it at the moment she spoke, and now she has decided to let it go to the end. If you don't say it's okay, I don't really want to know. Grandpa Yu, who has been dedicated to promoting his glorious deeds to his grandchildren why hasn't the child stepped down yet? Fortunately, Grandpa Yu had a strong ability to self-explain, and when he returned to the house, he had already adjusted his mentality and began to talk endlessly about his heroic deeds with his granddaughter. Back then, your grandfather and I were capable of killing a Japanese soldier with just one shot. I also saved the life of my regimental leader and the life of old Zhang, who was driving a cart in the village. And your grandmother, back then I was almost shot through the heart by a bullet to save her, but fortunately, I was lucky enough to have a bullet pass through my heart. Later, your grandmother was crying uncontrollably in front of the emergency room, and even said that if I survived, whether I was paralyzed or disabled, she would marry me and take care of me for a lifetime. Listening to a serious heroic story turned to a love story, what can Yu Jiang do? Yu Jiang felt that if she interrupted her grandfather at this time, she would really be beaten up. Grandpa Yu was still talking incessantly about Grandma Yu's deep love for him, when Grandma Yu, blushing with embarrassment, slammed the door open and walked in, tugging at Grandpa Yu's ear. I gave you a face with the surname Yu, didn't I? If you don't rest well, just give it to me here, it's endless. Also, what are you doing here? 
You forgot about coming to my doorstep every day to deliver flowers and cakes to me, right Grandpa Yu grabbed Grandma Yu's hand and begged for mercy, but Yu Jiang couldn't tell that neither Grandpa nor Grandma Yu exerted any force on their hands. Grandma Yu felt uncomfortable under Yu Jiang's gaze. Nanny, go to the main house for dinner, I'll take care of your grandfather. Yu Jiang naturally walked away with a knowing interest, but at the moment she left the door, she turned her head to look in the direction of Grandpa and Grandma Yu. Is this love? This is something that Yu Jiang has never encountered in the past twenty years. Yu Jiang felt a slight movement in her heart, but she quickly put that feeling behind her. After dinner, Yu Jiang was driven back to his room by his mother to rest. Yu Jiang returned to the room and released the invisible mode of the bracelet. The bright light of the light screen reflected on her face, but she remained motionless for a long time. A while has passed. In the end, Yu Jiang set up a ban at the entrance. Whenever someone approaches the door, the wristband will automatically sound an alarm. Then Yu Jiang's fingertips moved slightly, and a well dot equipped experimental table appeared in his room. In fact, this is only a small part of the experimental space, mainly because the room is too small to fit a table. But for making Grandpa use medicine, having this table is already enough. Yu Jiang also doesn't know why he broke his habit of treating diseases and saving people. Just Yu Jiang has a gradually firm idea in her heart, she wants to save. Grandpa Yu's illness is an old disease that cannot be solved at present, but for the interstellar era, this is just a matter of two pills. In order to avoid suspicion, Yu Jiang also specially reduced the medication's properties and needed to take it for half a month to fully recover. It's just that the medicine is ready, how can we give this medicine to Grandpa Yu honestly? Yu Jiang knew very well that this kind of thing should not be rushed at the moment. There are plenty of opportunities, just look for them slowly. Chapter 7 Restoring Abilities You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. In this way, Yu Jiang stayed at home leisurely for a few more days. Although almost the whole village knew about her amnesia, Yu's father and mother still closed their doors to avoid those messy people disturbing their daughter's recovery. Even Father Yu has been staying in the captain's office almost all these days to prevent anyone from coming to him. In fact, girls like her age either drop out of school early and go home to work, or they have already married someone. It is extremely rare for a rural girl like Yu Jiang to finish high school. And she is still idle at home now, it is precisely because of the care of her father and mother that she did not go down to work. Yu Jiang only feels that she has already started her retirement life ahead of schedule. She just graduated from high school this year and cannot take the college entrance exam now, so she can only stay at home, right? But Yu Jiang is not really idle either. In the past few days, she has gained a rough understanding of the world through the textbooks left by the original owner and the newspapers at home. Even Yu Jiang found the original owner's diary in the dark compartment on the couch. After all, a diary is still considered an unsafe thing nowadays. If someone discovers any flaws inside, it can endanger the whole family. I don't know what the original owner thought, but fortunately, I also know how to hide my diary. After spending two days carefully studying the diary, Yu Jiang placed it in the bracelet space. Although the diary records only small things, for Yu Jiang, this is enough to make her imitate the original owner 90% similar. As for the remaining 10%, I'm sorry, Yu Jiang has lost his memory now. Yu Jiang gradually adapted to this world. When Yu Jiang was kicked out of the kitchen by Grandma Yu for the ninth time, her mother almost swung her big broom. Damn the girl, let her lie down and she insists on coming to help. How many eggs do I have? Mother Yu complained to Grandma Yu. Grandma you comforted, isn't it necessary for the child to learn slowly, and the child's kind help? Mom. You're just getting used to her. This is food, who's wasting it like her. Not to mention waste, I can't even learn how to teach. Even the small town knows how to cook better than her. In theory, our family doesn't lack the genes for cooking. 
Grandma Yu flipped the spatula and poured out the eggs that Yu Jiang had just exploded, feeling extremely sorry for herself. Why don't you use it to feed chickens? After feeding the failed dish made by Yu Jiang to the chickens for the first time, the two laying hens fell ill. At that time, Grandpa Yu was so scared that he ran towards Dr. Lu in the village clinic holding a chicken, afraid that these two chickens would disappear. When Grandpa Yu came back holding the chicken, he didn't say how the chicken was doing, but from then on, it was strictly prohibited to feed any food made by Yu Jiang to the chicken. But Yu Jiang's nature is to be more and more courageous, so after her ninth attempt ended in failure, she was strictly prohibited from entering the kitchen by two women in her family. At this moment, the two people in the kitchen were still talking. Mom, am I not worried that she will be disliked by her mother? In law when she marries into her husband's house. Although there have been many families who have been testing our reputation in the past two years, if we really want to get married, that is another matter. After all, whose daughter, like our daughter, doesn't know how to cook food these days? Grandma Yu only sighed about this, although her family conditions were there, there was no shortage of people who came to propose marriage. But my granddaughter doesn't know how to cook, so it's hard to avoid being looked down upon when she gets married in the future. The matter of marrying a daughter is not urgent. If it's a big deal, let's take our time to choose. It's best to find a family member who can cook. How could it be so easy to find? And even if Jiang Zhang's husband can cook in the future, he may not be willing to serve our girls all day. In a moment of words, Grandma Yu had already put the stir-fried cabbage into a bowl. Slowly search, there will always be some. Anyway, the girl is only seventeen years old, and our family is not in a hurry to marry our daughter. After listening, Yu's mother didn't say anything anymore and only carried the vegetables to the main hall. Yu Jiang had no idea that her mother and grandmother were already worried about her future married life. She was testing her abilities in the vegetable garden. The idea of trying out supernatural powers had already existed when Yu Jiang was in the hospital, but it was not very convenient at that time and could easily be seen by others. Furthermore, at that time, Yu Jiang was physically weak due to injuries, and his powers could not be used at all. Just now, Yu Jiang suddenly felt a sensation of his entire body's meridians being activated. It should be because he has been recovering for the past few days, and Yu Jiang vaguely feels that his powers have returned. So Yu Jiang appeared in the vegetable garden. Yu Jiang leaned his palm towards a tomato vine, and the light and shadow flashed between his palms. He saw two tomatoes growing from nothing to something, and then gradually turning from green to bright red. Yu Jiang withdrew his hand with satisfaction and picked the tomatoes casually. Well, although the ability has been weakened from being able to pierce warships with vines by waving to the point where it can only ripen. Yu Jiang felt that his abilities were probably limited by the world, so be weak, it's better than nothing. Milk, hurry up, add some vegetables for lunch. I picked two big tomatoes. Yu Jiang walked towards the kitchen again with the tomatoes in his hand. But she was stopped by Yu's mother at the kitchen door. Where did you get the tomatoes? I remember the tomatoes in the yard weren't even ripe. That should be because you didn't see it. This is the one you picked in the corner just now. Excited for a moment, careless. At this moment, Yu Jiang was pretending to be calm and indifferent. At that time, she didn't even notice that a few tomatoes had ripened like this. Indeed, she had been living comfortably for a long time, and her basic alertness had decreased. Yu Jiang now only hopes that Yu's mother won't hold on to her and not let her go. Yu's mother only cared about her daughter not causing trouble in the kitchen. She just casually asked, without delving deeper, and entered the kitchen with a tomato in her hand. Yu Jiang quickly left his mother's sight when he saw that she no longer asked her. At night, Yu Jiang lay in bed, thinking about the recovery of his abilities and the leisurely life during this period. She decided to pick up her daily training again. For the sake of my own health, and even more so in case of any unexpected situation in the future. Do whatever you say and start exercising tomorrow. Chapter 8 
Up the Mountain and the Wild Boar. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The next morning, Yu Jiang woke up. Father Yu was preparing to go out when he saw Yu Jiang and was momentarily stunned. Why did Jiang Jiang get up so early today? Is he hungry? How about dad steamed two mantu for you? Yu Jiang was also a bit surprised when she saw her father. According to her observations during this period, his father usually doesn't wake up until after 7 o'clock. And it's only 6 o'clock now. So she never expected to meet anyone when she got up now. Although exercising early is not something that cannot be ignored. But in this era, people are still working hard for a bite to eat, and normal work is not easy. Coupled with occasional hunger, who has the extra strength to exercise? Only those like Yu Jiang who have enough food to eat at home and don't work much usually have the idea of getting up early and exercising specifically. No need, Dad. I have been feeling much better lately, so I just want to exercise in the morning to improve my health Father Yu nodded with a sudden realization. Exercise a bit, just wander around nearby and don't run too far. At this time, Father Yu thought that the Duan Lian mentioned by Yu Jiang was wandering in the field. Dad, what are you doing up so early today? Oh, it's about the team. I have to go to the city today. Okay, Dad, I'll go out first. Be careful on your way there. Yu Jiang walked out the door as soon as she spoke, but she felt that Yu's father might have lied. His bag and clothes today don't seem like he went to the city, but rather look like the attire of a government official. And the bag is bulging, as if it contains a lot of things. The most important thing is that Father Yu's speech is not something that a small captain could possess. But Yu's father was a former college student it's not impossible either. It's always someone else's business. Yu Jiang also doesn't feel that if he replaces the original owner, he must know all the secrets of the original owner's parents. Some things are better taken as unseen. Today, Yu Jiang is going to Yushan behind the village. It is said that someone has discovered jade on the mountain, so it is called Yushan. However, in these years, there has been no news of anyone finding jade on the mountain, so it is only a legend to listen to. Yu Jiang is also here today to explore the specific situation on the mountain. If possible, it will be more convenient to do anything in the future. Along the way, one can see some traces of people one after another. Yes, nowadays many children and women in the village come to the mountains to pick up mountain goods, and some men also come to the mountains to hunt wild chickens and rabbits to improve their food at home. After all, it's an era of not having enough to eat. Although everything on the mountain is public, everyone does it this way. As long as it's not done too excessively, no one will take care of it. Because people often come, there is nothing left on the outskirts of Yushan, and such an environment is obviously not what Yu Jiang wants. Taking a brief glance outside, Yu Jiang walked towards the depths of Yushan. The deeper you go, the fewer people there are, and when you look up, you see the towering trees, casting a shadow over the forest. Yu Jiang discovered several ancient earth plants depicted in books on the ground, which were edible plants. He took out a dagger from his bracelet, dug out these plants by connecting their roots, and finally placed them together in the bracelet space. There is no need to worry about whether these plants will die, the time in the space of the bracelet is still. Moreover, the botanical powers used by Yu Jiang can also revive these plants when they still have their last glimmer of vitality. Suddenly, Yu Jiang's perception told her that she was approaching when there was some danger. In the next second, the blood-colored whip in his hand was swung out, curling up the branches of the big tree above his head. Yu Jiang also used his strength to stand on the branches. At this moment, she saw clearly that a wild boar weighing about 200 pounds was charging towards her direction. This should be the territory of this wild boar, and her arrival gave the boar invaders a feeling, so they attacked her. Although this wild boar's body size is far inferior to those of the zerg that could easily reach over 3 meters in the interstellar era, its body size of over 1 meter still gives people a sense of oppression, 
with shiny brown fur all over its body and a pair of wild boar's unique fangs that give people a sense of danger. Yu Jiang has no feelings for this wild boar, and she doesn't want to cause any trouble. Just wait for the wild boar to leave before she goes down the mountain. But this wild boar seems to have become accustomed to being king in this area and has no tolerance for intruders. Even if Yu Jiang is now on a tree, it cannot climb it. But he repeatedly hit the trunk with his huge body, as if he was about to break the tree. Yu Jiang was no longer polite when he saw this. Since she is determined to die, she will fulfill it. A wooden stick as thick as an adult male arm quietly appeared in Yu Jiang's hand. Yu Jiang didn't know when she had such a thing stored in her bracelet space. Just now, she wanted a handy tool, and the wooden stick appeared in her hand. Yu Jiang held a wooden stick in one hand and suddenly plunged down when the wild boar was about to charge over again. Then, with a heavy stick, he hit the boar's head and the boar fell to the ground. Yu Jiang silently sighed in his heart, TSK. This body is still too weak, it took 50% of the effort to knock this wild boar unconscious. If it were for the interstellar self, it would be someone who can fight against the mutated zerg with bare hands. We still need to practice. Yu Jiang hit the wild boar's head again with a stick. Then the wild boar dragged towards the outskirts of Yushan, and by this time the sky was already bright, and the hard-working people had already left. Yu Jiang naturally wouldn't bring this wild boar back to the village with great fanfare. He would place the boar in a grassy shelter and casually throw away a restriction to prevent others from seeing it. He would carry a small basket and walk towards his home at the foot of the mountain. When she returned home, Yu's mother was already cooking in the kitchen, while Yu's grandfather and grandmother were busy working in the vegetable garden. When Yu Jiang walked to the kitchen door, his mother was also startled. How did Jiang Jiang come back from outside the door? You left so early today, where did you go? Yu Jiang also didn't go into the kitchen to provoke trouble. Mom, I went up the mountain today and also shot a wild boar. What are you doing up the mountain this morning? Your body hasn't fully recovered yet. And didn't you tell me? There are wild boars on the mountain, so I told you not to go up there if you have nothing to do. What did you just say? What did you hit? At first, Yu's mother didn't react, but later realized what Yu Jiang was saying and her tone couldn't help but become urgent. I ran into a silly pig on the mountain and knocked it unconscious when it hit a tree. I went to fix it with two sticks, and it died. Yu Jiang slightly embellished the story to his mother. You ran up the mountain early in the morning and encountered a wild boar. You even killed it. Yu Jiang, can you do it? I don't know if it's dangerous, is it? Mother you could not have known that wild boars would not hit trees for no reason, unless intentionally guided. At this moment, Yu's mother simply doesn't know how to say that Yu Jiang is good. She should be praised for her skill and bravery. You're not injured. No, when I approached the wild boar, she had already fainted. Yu Jiang continued to lie without changing his expression. Yu's mother doesn't want to delve deeper into her daughter, as long as she's not injured. How big is that wild boar and where is it? I hid over 200 pounds on the mountain. After listening, Yu's mother put down the spatula and walked towards the small vegetable garden. Dad, Jiang Jiang ran into a wild boar that crashed and died on a tree when he went up the mountain today. Now the wild boar is hidden in the mountain, what do you think should be done? The meaning in Yu's words can be said to be rich. Although the things on the mountain are owned by the public, things like hunting are usually eaten quietly by whoever catches them, and the village doesn't say anything. But her husband is the captain, and in this position, he always sacrifices something for the village. For example, this wild boar, they have the ability to handle it without telling anyone, but neither the husband or the in-laws are willing to swallow it on their own. And if discovered, her husband's position as captain would have a stain that could be attacked. Grandpa Yu was also surprised when his granddaughter ran into a wild boar that had been hit and killed. It's not surprising, but the main thing is that after double polishing, 
Yu Jiang killed a wild boar, turned it into a wild boar that knocked out, and Yu Jiang repaired the knife. Finally, it became what Grandpa Yu heard. Yu Jiang met a wild boar that was knocked to death. Even so, Yu Jiang was still criticized by Grandpa Yu for a while. Dad, today Jian Shi, Yu's father, went to the city. What should be done with this wild boar? You have to come up with a charter. Grandpa Yu did not make a decision without authorization, but asked Yu Jiang, you brought this thing back. What you want to do is up to you to decide. Yu Jiang was originally a wild boar that she casually attacked, and she had just arrived in this world and was not clear about any rules. Let her decide for herself what to do if something goes wrong. Grandpa, just help me make a decision. Grandpa Yu thought for a moment, but in the end, he told Yu Jiang about both situations and let her decide. One way is for us to take the wild boar home and share it ourselves. Our family doesn't lack meat, so it's not difficult to hide this meat. However, our family is different from others. Your father is a team leader here, and there are always so many people coming to our door every day. Even if we suddenly have more meat at home, there is still a possibility of being discovered. The second option is for our family to suffer some losses and share the meat with everyone. Although our family can only receive a small portion in this way, it can still be considered as a way to repay the last time the villagers helped take you to the hospital. And out of my own selfish desire, I still want the team to have a good meal before the autumn harvest Yu Jiang listened to Grandpa Yu's analysis and agreed to the idea of separating the wild boar. Mainly, only in such occasions can she see all the people in the village at once. After all, it is highly likely that the incident of the original owner being injured and killed was caused by the hands of the villagers. Yu Jiang wants to take a look at these people first, and it may not be possible to find some clues. Yu Jiang ultimately decided to divide the pork and let Grandpa Yu handle this matter with full authority. Upon hearing his granddaughter's words, Grandpa Yu did not hesitate and instructed his mother, Jian Shi, Father Yu, is not here today. Hurry up to the secretary's house and let him take charge of the pig distribution. Then, let a few men and the girl go to the mountain to lift the wild boar down. After Grandpa Yu finished speaking, he remembered something and turned to comfort Yu Jiang, saying, Of course, Grandpa won't mistreat my daughter either. When Grandpa gives you some money tonight, you can go to the county and buy whatever you want. Yu Jiang didn't refuse either. She still wanted to see what kind of things are sold in this era. Without money, it's not enough. Okay, thank you Grandpa. Soon, the whole family split up and went to work. Yu's mother went to find the secretary, and Yu Jiang took Grandpa Yu and several close neighbors to the mountain to pick up pigs. Grandma Yu is preparing a bucket of pork at home for a while. Although the girl was generous, she distributed the pork among everyone. But the wild boar was discovered by her daughter, it's not excessive for the pig blood and pig water to belong to their family. Chapter 9 Divide Pork into Thick Skinned Yu Yu You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. During this period, Yu Jiang can be considered a hot topic in Fenghe village. First, he was found to have hit his head by the river and was taken to the hospital in the county town. Then came news of Yu Jiang's amnesia. After Yu Jiang returned to the village, the aunties in the village all wanted to go to the Yu family to see the situation. However, during these days, the Yu family has been closed to guests, and no one has heard any definite news. Finally, everyone's enthusiasm faded a bit. Suddenly, the secretary announced on the radio that Yu Jiang had caught a wild boar on the mountain and now asked everyone to go to the brigade to distribute the pork. Now everyone is extremely excited, and there are more and more discussions about Yu Jiang. Gradually, rumors spread that a wild boar died when it ran into a tree in Yu Jiang, then a wild boar died when it ran after Yu Jiang, and finally Yu Jiang lifted a wild boar and ran it into a tree, killing it. When dividing the meat equally, an aunt secretly asked Yu's mother, why do they all say that this wild boar was killed by your girl? Oh my, this child bumped his head by the river and even hit the iron head skill from the previous Shao Wu temple. Mother Yu. 
Good guy, in just such a short while, my own daughter has become a pig bumping Iron Man among other people. Her daughter bumped her head, but she wouldn't be foolish enough to take her head and collide with that wild boar. How could it be so mysterious? It's just that this girl has been holding back a lot at home these days. She ran to the mountain to play on her own and happened to see a wild boar bump into a tree, which she picked up as a bargain. When Yu Jiang and Grandpa Yu walked in with a group of men carrying wild boars, they heard their conversation. Are rumors so outrageous these days? The captain is not here today, and when the secretary sees everyone present, he starts to take charge of slaughtering pigs and dividing meat. Before dividing the meat, there was a routine verbal encouragement that excited the villagers, and some even wanted to roll up their sleeves and work on the spot. Yu Jiang couldn't help but think of a word passed down on ancient earth. Painting big cakes after a passionate speech, the secretary did not forget Yu Jiang and praised her spirit of dedication, calling her a role model for the young people in the village. Yu Jiang silently felt a pair of eyes that were either envious, jealous, or looking at fools. Come on, uncle, stop talking. Are you afraid that I haven't had enough hype lately? Even though Yu Jiang has all kinds of roast in his heart, he just modestly says that this is what he should do, and today's event is purely her luck. Attempt to weaken her influence in this matter again, as she has not yet established herself here and cannot be too high. Profile. Then, Uncle Dashin, who has been in charge of pig killing at the end of the year in the village, started the operation, and the pig killing officially began. Grandma Yu proudly brought home a large pot of pig blood and a bucket of pig water amidst a crowd of envious gazes. Yu's mother and Yu Jiang waited together to divide the pork. Because she had already taken pig blood and pig offal, Yu's mother declined the secretary's suggestion to give their family an extra two tails of meat. After all, their family is already I. Catching enough, there is no need to make others jealous and cause more trouble for the sake of too young meat. A 200 pound wild boar weighs over 130 pounds of pork, 15 pounds of pig head, and a total of 70 pounds of pig bones and hooves. There are over a hundred households in the village, each with a little over one pound of pork and eight liang of pork bones. As for the pig head, it was bought back with some money from eight educated youth in the academy. Those educated youth are all children from the city, and sometimes their families send them some money, so they are too lazy to compete with the villagers for the fat, so they simply spend more money to buy pig heads that nobody wants. Of course, the secretary only symbolically sold them at a price of five cents per kilogram. Yu Jiang also met these educated youth for the first time today. She felt that one of the jealous gazes just now came from these educated youth, but she couldn't be sure who it was. I still need to go home and inquire with my grandmother. Yu's mother rushed home after receiving the pork, and she had to go back to help Yu's grandmother cook blood. Yu Jiang was left behind by the secretary for another round of praise. On the way home, I saw a woman wearing a pudding but with a delicate hairpin on her head running towards her and complaining in front of her, panting heavily, Cousin, why didn't you wait for me just now? Also, you haven't come to me these days. Didn't you agree to give me the headband that the uncle brought to you from the city and two cans of meat sauce from the words of a woman combined with the popularity of Yu's mother before, Yu Jiang already knew that the woman in front of him was his uncle's youngest daughter, her cousin Yu Yu. Listening to Yu Yu's words, I remembered the wife of Mr. Yu who caused trouble at home. Sure enough, you can give birth to any child in your belly. Since the incident with Yu Jiang, Yu Yu has been constantly worried. However, news of Yu Zhang's amnesia later spread, and her uncle's family never came to find her, so she believed that Yu Jiang really had amnesia. So today, I ran confidently towards the lion in Yu Jiang and spoke loudly. Yu Jiang couldn't help but find it funny. You should know that the headband that Yu Yu wanted was brought to her by Yu's father's friend from Kyoto, and Yu Jiang himself couldn't bear to wear it. Once, Yu Yu ran into her room and flipped over this headband, pestering her several times to ask for it. She just didn't give it, so Yu Yu finally let go of this thought. These are all written in the diary of the original owner. Although the original owner did not like Yu Yu very much, 
she was still her uncle's daughter and was usually polite to her. In addition, Yu Yu's mother had such a son over daughter personality. So Yu Yu came to her to ask for something, and she would occasionally give it. However, the original owner seems to have raised a white-eyed wolf. Yu Jiang remembers that the original owner wrote in the latest diary that Yu Yu invited her to play by the river. And that day was the day when the original owner died and the Yu River crossed over. If it were to be said that the death of the original owner had nothing to do with this cousin, she wouldn't believe it even if she died. I don't remember what I said about giving you a headband, and the hair clip you're wearing on your head now is also something I lent you, right? How long did you say you kept it? One day, right. Why are you wearing it for too long now and treating it as your own? Don't want to return it, you. You. Didn't you lose your memory? Yu Yu exclaimed in surprise. Perhaps it's some shameless actions that are too unforgettable, right? For example, those who borrow things but don't return them, like those who spend their days in the autumn breeze at home and still ask me for things. I really can't forget them even if I want to. Do you think so? Cousin. Yu Jiang sarcastically stared at Yu Yu, who felt his face being trampled on by this bullying cousin. How could you say that about me? I'm your cousin. Yu Jiang pretended to be suspicious, I didn't say you, cousin. What I said was just that thick-skinned one. No, no. My cousin doesn't think she's just that shameless and thick-skinned person, does she? Yu Yu blushed with embarrassment, feeling that she shouldn't have come to find Yu Jiang today. Damn it. How can I go to the hospital and my mind is still refreshed? Why didn't you hit her dead? I, I'm going to tell grandma that you bullied me. Speaking, Yu Yu was about to run away. Yu Jiang wouldn't just let Yu Yu slip away like this, grabbing Yu Yu's hand and saying word by word. Wait, since my cousin said she's not thick-skinned, should she return the hairpin she borrowed from me? The words also emphasized borrowing a few words from me. Yu Yu attempted to break free from the shackles of Yu Jiang, but several attempts ended in failure. Finally, Yu Yu excitedly pulled the hair clip from his head and threw it fiercely onto the ground. Give it back to you, what kind of broken thing? I don't care about it. As soon as Yu Jiang let go of Yu Yu, he saw her running towards his own house. Want to file a complaint? My grandmother is not someone who can be easily manipulated in just a few words. Yu Jiang picked up the hair clip on the ground, with a few strands of hair floating on it. Oh, it hurts quite a bit, it's just right. Who made her break her hairpin? Yu Jiang is not a rare little thing, it's just the original owner's property, and he can only do his best to protect it for her. Chapter 10 Old Stories of the Yu Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio Yu Jiang wandered around the village for a while, estimating that Yu Yu had already been sent away by Grandma Yu before returning home. As expected, when I walked into the kitchen, I only saw two women at home busy dealing with pig waste. Milk, has Yu Yu left? Grandma Yu raised her head and looked at her granddaughter with a look of knowing everything. I suddenly felt amused and couldn't help but joke, don't worry about her coming to accuse you. When you come back, I'll scold you. Yu Jiang stepped forward and took Grandma Yu's arm, swaying slightly. Milk you're my milk, why wouldn't you turn towards me? Yu Jiang has gradually become familiar with these family members these days, and with his understanding of the original owner, he is now able to act coquettishly in front of Grandma Yu. Although it is still a bit awkward, he is already considered proficient compared to when he was originally in the hospital. The girl Yu Yu has been taught badly by her mother these years. She can't imagine the girl of the Yu family. She has learned all about his mother's haggling. Yu's mother and Yu Jiang only listened and didn't speak up, after all, Yu Yu was also the granddaughter of Yu's grandmother no matter how much she said. There were some things that Yu's grandmother said, but they couldn't say. Hey, forget it, we've already split up. We agreed not to live with them, and they don't have to support us. The old man and I won't leave anything for them after we die. 
In fact, a child who has been separated from their family would not even be supported by their parents. The current situation is largely caused by the interference of Mr. Yu's wife behind the scenes. Initially, Yu's father had a serious illness and needed to go to the hospital for surgery. Generally, the cost of the surgery would be borne by both Yu's father and Yu's wife. However, how could Yu's wife be willing to pay? In addition, after hearing from the hospital that a large sum of money was needed for subsequent treatment, Yu's wife immediately proposed to split the family. Mr. Yu was originally unwilling to do it, but after all, it was his father. But I can't help but feel the pillow wind from my wife. Moreover, Mr. Yu was already resentful of his father passing on the job of captain to his younger brother instead of him, although he also knew that he couldn't compare himself to his younger brother who graduated from college without graduating from junior high school. I don't usually feel much, just muddled through like this. But when faced with something, even being instigated by my wife, I felt that my father was biased, so I ended up dividing the family. The reason why the couple split up is to avoid paying for medical expenses, and naturally, they are also unwilling to pay for their future support. After this, Grandpa and Grandma Yu also felt a chill, so they signed the document. After the death of Mr. Yu and his family, they do not need to bear any obligation of support, but similarly, half of the property left by Grandpa Yu and Grandma Yu will not be left to Mr. Yu and his family. At that time, Mr. Yu and his family had just married their eldest daughter and were already wealthy. They didn't like the three melons and two dates in the hands of Grandpa Yu and Grandma Yu, so they simply signed the document. Later on, the wife of the eldest son of Yu also found many reasons to support the autumn breeze, but Grandpa and Grandma of Yu showed a resolute attitude and presented the written documents for them to leave. One time, Boss Yu wanted his father to help his son Yu Bauer find a job in the county town. Although Yu Fu is the village captain, he still has some connections in the county town. Finding a job may be difficult, but it's not impossible to move around. But I can't resist Mr. Yu's idea of getting a job in the city for nothing, without even thinking of a penny. You should know how tense the work in the city is now, otherwise there wouldn't be so many educated youth going to the countryside every year. Yu Bauer is already ignorant and inexperienced, so it is impossible to use normal recruitment methods. I can only buy a job privately. But whether it's looking for a job through connections or secretly buying a job, it requires a large sum of money to be thrown away. In just a few words, Boss Yu wants to get a job for his son who bought his junior high school education. What kind of century-old enemy is he really considering others? At that time, not only did Yu's father and mother listen angrily, but Grandpa Yu even kicked his eldest son's family out with a broom. Afterwards, Grandpa Yu fell ill for several days, and as a result, his father didn't like to see his older brother and the others. The matter of Yu Bauer's work has come to an end. As a result, Boss Yu harbored even more resentment towards his father, and even towards Grandpa Yu. Nowadays, there is hardly any interaction between the two families. Even the most basic way of paying New Year's greetings is to avoid spending that string of family gifts, so Mr. and Mrs. Yu will not come to visit Grandpa and Grandma Yu. Just let Yu Bauer and Yu Yu come here to get New Year's red envelopes and have a meal of meat. After all, they are still their own younger generation, and the Yu family, who celebrated the Chinese New Year, did not drive people away. But I never take the initiative to deal with Mr. Yu's family in my daily life. Yu Bao considers himself to have backbone, and as the only male servant in the family, he can get money from his parents, so he usually doesn't come to see Grandpa and Grandma Yu. But Yu Yu is different. Yu Lauda's daughter. In law is not willing to spend money on a girl's movie, so Yu Yu took up the idea of Yu Jiang. Over the years, Yu Yu has also benefited a lot from Yu Jiang. Although the whole family has turned a blind eye, he still comes to complain if he can't get something now. How could Grandma Yu give her a good face and send her away in just a few words? At this time, except for Yu Jiang who had read the diary and Yu Yu himself, the family members were unaware of Yu Yu's appointment to the riverbank. Otherwise, Yu's mother and grandmother wouldn't have allowed her to enter the door. 
It's fine if they don't chase her with a stick. Yu Jiang doesn't plan to involve her elders in this matter for the time being. At least she needs to find out the truth first, right? And now what Yu Jiang can confirm is that even if Yu Yu did not directly participate in the incident of the original owner's death, he was definitely an informant, and even her contribution was involved. As for why not suspect that it was Yu Yu's hand? It's not that Yu Jiang deliberately underestimated it, she really doesn't think Yu Yu has the courage. There should be someone behind this matter, at least today when dividing the pork, the malicious gaze from the group of people from the youth academy had to catch people's attention revenge can be avenged, but we still need to wait and investigate slowly while contemplating in Yu Jiang, Yu's father, who had missed the entire pork splitting scene, helped his bicycle into the yard. Father Yu quickly entered the house without even locking his bicycle. Mom, light rain. I heard on my way back that our Jiang Jiang knocked out a wild boar with his bare hands. What's going on? Father Yu didn't say anything next because he saw a pot full of pig blood and pig water. This is our Jiang Jiang really chopped a wild boar with his bare hands three people in the kitchen. Yes, it's another version. Yu's mother gave her father another good explanation, and he finally regained his senses from the shock. So Yu Jiang received another ideological education about girls not to run around Yu Jiang. She's so difficult, she really wants to leave.